Hi guys, Tech Geek for Life here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can flash Android 4.4 KitKat on your Samsung Galaxy S2 GT i9-100. Uh, this is a custom ROM called Cyanogen Mod 11, and those of you who have rooted your phones in the past are probably familiar with Cyanogen Mod and what it is. Yeah, so it's basically a custom ROM that allows you to have stock Android on your phone. And as the Galaxy S2 is quite an old device now, Samsung have stopped updating it. They stopped updating it quite a while ago now. And they left it at 4.1.2, which is what I'm currently running, as you see there. This is only for the i9100 model, but if you have the i9100G, there is a build of OmniROM out there available. And to do this, you need to make sure your phone is rooted and you have super user installed and then there's three files you need to download there's the actual ROM file there's uh, the core Google Apps file and then there's a super user file to maintain root access after flashing this so at the moment I'm running a stock rooted ROM uh, I'm running the XEU build so it's the international no the UK one the unlocked UK one it's running Jabu kernel and it's rooted. So we'll go switch the phone off. This is quite a simple process. There isn't much involved. Oh, I forgot. There's one more file you need to download, which is a file to update the kernel and the recovery on the device. And you need to make sure you have the latest Clockwork Mod recovery to flash any KitKat ROM on your phone. So we'll go into recovery by holding volume up, the home button, and the power button all at the same time. There we go. That's just to show that it's in a modified state. You can use triangle away obviously to get rid of that. And you need to make sure you have Clockwork Mod Recovery 6.043 or above to flash any KitKat ROM. And as you can see at the moment I have 6.027. So to update this you'll need to flash a kernel from Cyanogen Mod 10.2 which will give you a kernel which supports the recovery so you have a supported recovery to flash this ROM. So what you want to get what you want to do is go to install zip. There's the, the second option. Press the power, power button to select it. Then choose it from SD card. Then I'll go into my folder. Then I need to go down to CM 10.2 and then the numbers. You can't see that, but kernel CM 10.2 that will update your recovery to um, the 6.045 recovery I think which is above 6.043 so you press the home button to select it or you might have to press the power button depending on what recovery you're using you want to go down and click yes after this you will need to go back and then down to advanced then reboot recovery this will make sure that your recovery is changed um, especially so you can flash the KitKat ROM if you just uh, reboot system now then you may get stuck in a boot loop because your current ROM may not support the kernel which we have just flashed and now you can see I have 6.045 as my recovery version. So that's what I need. So now we need to go down to install zip. And I know that in this one they have changed it so you have to use the power button. Choose it from SD card 1. I'm going to go SD card 1 as SD card 1 is your external SD card and SD card 0 is your internal SD card. And the files are on my external SD card. So then go on that, wait for it. Then into my folder. Then I need to flash the 
you need to flush the actual CM11 file first. Then after that, it will be the, the core Google Apps. Then after that, it will be the super user file. So firstly, we'll go down and select CM11 unofficial. This is still in development stages, so you can expect bugs. However, there aren't many major issues, so you can possibly use this as a daily driver. However, do go check out the XDA thread where I got this from. I'll leave a link to that. And you can have a look at the change log on there to see if there's anything that, that that's actually going to prevent you from using this as a daily driver. We'll just let this uh, flash. I'll go through the whole process to prevent anyone, as I said in my last video, complaining that I didn't do it properly or I cut it out because it didn't work and that everyone bricked their phones because I cut it out and I, it was fake and whatever so we're just going to go through everything and as you can see the status bar moving along that's it, install from SD card complete so now we go to SD card 1 again then into the folder um, you can put these anywhere on your SD card as long as you know where they are I'd actually recommend putting them on the root directory of your SD card so you can get to them easily after this we need to flash uh, gapps core 4.4 signed gapps so being google apps so you can use the google services press the power button select it install from sd card complete then we go back down to choose it from sd card one for the final time into the folder then update super user version 1.65 that's the latest version of super user there is click yes done install from sd card complete now we need to go back and then wipe data slash factory reset then wipe cache partition then down to advanced and then wipe Dalvik cache click yes and that should be it so we'll go back and reboot system now and hopefully it should boot into Android 4.4 KitKat and it should show the Cyanogen mod boot screen as opposed to the Samsung animation thing And if you go on the XDA developer website right now, you will see there are quite a few KitKat builds out there already. There are builds for several devices, even though KitKat was only out a few weeks ago. There's one for the Galaxy Nexus, which I've already covered in another video. So if you want to go check that out, please do. There's one for the i9100G. There's one for the Galaxy S3 Mini. There's one for the Xperia P the S3 International i9300 the AT&T S3, the Sprint S3 and there's so many more builds out there and if you want to check any of those out go check out xda-developers.com and do a quick search with your device name and 4.4 KitKat so we'll let this boot up now Of course, if you want to, you can skip this. I will leave an annotation on the screen if you wish to skip this. And there we go, we're booted up into Android 4.4 KitKat. So we have the welcome screen, next, skip, no, not now, skip, next, finish, okay, and there's your Android 4.4 KitKat UI, with the clear notification bar, or well, not clear, but transparent notification bar. If we go down to about phone, Android version 4.4, and there you can see the KitKat 
Easter egg. And there we are. So this Easter egg covering every single Android version from the start. Let's kick up. And that's it, you have successfully flashed Android 4.4 KitKat onto your Samsung Galaxy S2. There's also OmniROM, which is based around Android 4.4 as well, and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But performance wise, this ROM is very good. It's quite lightweight compared to the stock TouchWiz ROM, as Samsung always packed bloatware into the stock ROMs. And there we go, only 45 meg of internal. 44 meg of internal memory used. And that's the whole ROM. I'm running 395 meg of free RAM. Normally, I only get around 150 to 200 meg of RAM free. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Please like, favorite, and subscribe if you found this video helpful, or if you want to see more content in the future. And be sure to leave a comment of what you want to see in future videos. Thank you.